Good afternoon. Welcome to our Museum of Ancient History and to my department, Curiosities of the Good Old, Far Off 20th Century. The 20th century was a thing called the Era of the Book. In those days, there were books on everything, from anteaters to Zulus. Books taught people how to and when to, and where to, and why to. They illustrated, educated, punctuated, and even decorated. But the strangest thing a book ever did was to save the Earth. You haven't heard about the Martian invasion of 2040. What do they teach nowadays? Well, you know, the invasion never really happened, because a single book stopped it. What was the book, you ask? A noble encyclopedia. A tome about rockets and missiles? A secret file from outer space? No, it was none of those. It was. But here, let me turn on the history scope, and show you what happened many centuries ago, in 2040. Oh great and mighty think tank, most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe. What are your orders? You left out my part of salutation. Apprentice Noodle, go over the whole thing again. It shall be done, sir. Oh great and mighty think tank. Ruler of Mars and her two moons, most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe. What are your orders? That's better, Noodle. I wish to be placed in communication with our manned space probe to that ridiculous little planet, which we are going to put under our generous rulership. What do they call it, again? Earth, your intelligence. Earth, of course. You see how insignificant that place is? But first, something important. My mirror. I wish to consult my mirror. It shall be done, sir. He hands Think Tank a mirror. Mirror, mirror in my hand. Who is the most fantastically intellectually gifted being in the land? You, sir. Quicker. Answer quicker next time. I hate a slow mirror. Ah, there I am. Aren't we Martians a handsome race? So much more attractive than those ugly earthlings with tiny heads. Noodle, you keep on exercising your mind, and someday, you'll have a balloon brain, just like mine. Oh, I hope so, Marty Think Tank. I hope so. Now contact the space probe. I want to invade that primitive ball of mud, called Earth, before lunch. It shall be done. Sir. I have a close sighting of the space crew, sir. Excellent. Make voice contact. Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe 1. Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe 1. Come in, Captain Omega, and give us your location. There's a chain around Omega's neck, through which Think Tank can listen her sound and watch. Captain Omega, to Space Mars Control. Lieutenant Iota, Sergeant Oop. And I have arrived on this Earth without indication. We've taken shelter in this, this square place. Have you any idea where we are, Lieutenant Iota? Holding up a book. I can't figure it out, Captain. I've counted 2,000 of these strange items. This place must be some sort of storage barn. What do you think, Sergeant? Two? I haven't a clue. I've been to seven galaxies, but I've never seen anything like this. Maybe they're hatch. Say, maybe this is a haberdashery. Haberdashery? Small items used for sewing. Perhaps the great and mighty think tank will give us the benefit of his thought on the matter. Elementary, my dear Amiga. Hold one of those items up, so that I may view it closely. Omega holds a book in his hand. Yes, yes, I understand now. Since Earth creatures are always eating, the place in which you find yourself is undoubtedly a crude refreshment stand. He says we're in a refreshment stand. Well, the Earthlings certainly have a strange diet. That item in your hand is called a sandwich. A sandwich. A sandwich. A sandwich. Sandwiches are the main staple of Earth diet. There are two slices of what is called bread, 
and between them, is some sort of filling. That is correct, sir. To confirm my opinion, I order you to eat it. Do you doubt the mighty think tank? Oh, no, no. But poor Lieutenant Iota has not had her breakfast. Lieutenant Iota, I order you to eat this sandwich. Eat it. Oh, Captain. It's a very great honor to be the first Martian to eat a sandwich, I'm sure. But how can I be so impolite as to eat it before my sergeant? Sergeant, who? I order you to eat the sandwich immediately. Who? Lieutenant. Me, Lieutenant. For the glory of Mars, oop. Yes, of course. Immediately. He bites down a corner of the book. Well, oop. Well, oop. <laughs> Omega and Iota pound him on the back. Was it not delicious, Sergeant Oop? That is right, sir. It was not delicious. I don't know how Earthlings can get those sandwiches down without water. They're dry as Martian dust. Sir, sir. Great and mighty think tank. I beg your pardon. But an insignificant bit of data floated into my mind, about those sandwiches. It can't be worth much, but go ahead. Give us your trifling bit of data. Well, sir, I have seen survey films of those sandwiches. I noticed that Earthlings didn't eat them. They used them, as some sort of communication device. Naturally. That was my next point. These are actually communication sandwiches. Think Tank is never wrong. Who is never wrong? Great Great mind 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 is, never is, wrong. Wrong. is never wrong. Therefore, I order you to listen to them. Listen to them. Listen to them. Listen to them. Do you have marbles in your ears? I said, listen to them. It shall be done, sir. They each take two books and hold them to their ears, listening intently. Do you hear anything? Do you hear anything, Oop? Not a thing. Shh. Well? Well? Report to me. What do you hear? Nothing, sir. Perhaps we are not on the correct frequency. Nothing, sir. Perhaps the Earthlings have sharper ears than we do. I don't hear a thing. Maybe these sandwiches don't make sounds. What? Does somebody suggest the mighty think tank has made a mistake? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. We'll keep listening. Please excuse me, your brilliance, but a cloudy piece of information is twirling around in my head. Well, twirl it out, Noodle. I will clarify it for you. I seem to recall that the Earthlings did not listen to the sandwiches. They opened them, and watched them. Yes, that is quite right. I will clarify that for you, Captain Omega. Those sandwiches are not for rear communication, they are for eye communication. Now, Captain Omega, take that large, colorful sandwich over there. It appears to be important. Tell me what you observe. Omega picks up a volume of Mother Goose. They each look into it. It appears to contain pictures of Earthlings. There seems to be some sort of code. Code? I told you this was important. Describe the code. It's little lines and squiggles and dots. Thousands of them, alongside the pictures. Perhaps the Earthlings are not as primitive as we have thought. We must break the code. Forgive me, your cleverness. But didn't the chemical department give our space people vitamins, to increase their intelligence? Stop. A thought of magnificent brilliance has come to me. Space people. Our chemical department has given you vitamins to increase your intelligence. Take them immediately, and then watch the sandwich. The meaning of the code will slowly unfold before you. It shall be done, sir. Remove vitamins. Crew takes vitamins from boxes on their belts. Present vitamins. They hold vitamins in front of them, stiffly. Swallow vitamins. They pop the vitamins into their mouths, and gulp simultaneously. Excellent. Now, decipher that code. It, it shall, shall be done, done sir. sir. They look at the book, turning pages. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs>
What does it say? Tell me this instant. Transcribe, Omega. Yes, sir. She reads with great seriousness. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With cockle shells and silver bells, and pretty maids, all in a row. <laughs> Imagine that. Pretty maids growing in a garden. Stop. There's no time for levity. Levity, treating a serious matter with humor. Don't you realize the seriousness of this discovery? The earthlings have discovered how to combine agriculture and mining. They can actually grow crops of rare metals, such as silver and cockle shells. They can grow high explosives, too. Noodle, contact our invasion fleet. They are ready to go down and take over the earth, sir. Tell them to hold. Tell them, new information has come to us about Earth. Iota, transcribe. Yes, sir. She reads very seriously. Hey diddle diddle. The cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon, the little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. <laughs> the dish ran away with the spoon. Stop laughter. Stop. This is more and more alarming. The Earthlings have reached a high level of civilization. Didn't you hear? They have taught their domesticated animals musical culture and space techniques. Even their dogs have a sense of humor. Why, at this very moment, they may be launching an interplanetary attack of millions of cows. Notify the invasion fleet. No invasion today. Oop, transcribe the next code. Yes. Sir, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put Humpty Dumpty together again. Oh, look, sir. Here's a picture of Humpty Dumpty. Why, sir, he looks like, he looks like. Turns large picture of Humpty Dumpty towards Think Tank. It's me. It's my great and mighty balloon brain. The Earthlings have seen me, and they're after me. Had a great fall. That means, they plan to capture more central control in me. It's an invasion on Mars. Noodle, prepare a space capsule for me. I must escape without delay. Space people, you must leave Earth at once. But be sure to remove all your traces of your visit. The Earthlings must not know. But I know. Omega, Iota and Noop rush about, putting books back on shelves. Where shall we go, sir? A hundred miles away from Mars. Order the invasion fleet to evacuate the entire planet of Mars. We are heading for Alpha Centauri, a hundred million miles away. And that's how one dusty old book of nursery rhymes. Saved the world from a Martian invasion. As you all know, in the 25th century, 500 years after all this happened, we Earthlings resumed contact with Mars, and we even became very friendly with the Martians. By that time, great and mighty think tank had been replaced by a very clever Martian. Who? The wise and wonderful, Noodle. Oh, yes, we taught the Martians the difference between sandwiches and books. We taught them how to read, too, and we established a model library in their capital city, Marisopolis. But as you might expect, there's still one book that the Martians never bring themselves to read. You've guessed it. Mother Goose. <laughs>